school march of last year, I was her typical teenager. I loved horseback riding, eventing to be more specific, skiing and spending time with friends and family. Then it all changed. I went to the doctor to have a large bump on my thigh checked out. I was told what I thought might be a bad bruise had a high probability of being cancer. After many tests, two biopsy surgeries for my lung and my leg, and a stressful couple of weeks, I was diagnosed with a rare form of bone cancer known as uterine sarcoma. There are approximately 250 cases diagnosed a year in the US. My treatment, treatment included 14 rounds of chemotherapy, during which I was hospitalized for two to five days in a row for each round. I've undergone surgery to remove the tumor and replace my femur with five inches of titanium and a new pit ball. I can now call myself the titanium girl. <laughs> I've had multiple MRIs, CT scans, PET scans, and x-rays. I've also had multiple blood transfusions, and I've been poked so many times I can't remember how many. I used a wheelchair, walker, crutches, and a cane. I was in a back and leg brace to set my hip for seven weeks straight, 24 hours a day. I spent 54 nights in the hospital and have gone to over 200 doctor's appointments. I will continue to get scanned every three months for this first year and then yearly every year for the next five. In a nutshell, that is my medical history. But this isn't a speech about that. Because as you get to know me, you will realize that I don't like spending a lot of time talking about my disease as it relates to me. People ask me what it's like to have cancer. That's easy. It sucks. I want nothing more than to be a normal teenager. I'm honored that you asked me here today to speak. Before I get started, I want to tell a funny story. I wore braces for about five years, from third grade through eighth grade, which meant we spent a lot of time at my orthodontist. During one of my appointments, my mom and him were discussing private schools. He sent all of his girls to home in Maine. He told me that during morning break, the school had a muffin and beverage cart that went and would come around for the girls. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but it sounded so great to me. <laughs> I was given a choice. I could take the five chemotherapy drugs that were included in what the hospital calls their BAT plan, best available treatment plan. Or I could take an additional six drug that was currently being tested on patients. This would have meant an additional six more weeks of chemotherapy added on to the 30 weeks I was already facing. It also meant future side effects of a drug that the doctors know little about. My parents and I talked about this, but in the end, they said it was my decision. The drugs that are currently being used today, the drugs that I took, at one time were experimental. Kids had to try them to figure out if they worked and what the side effects could be. In the end, I decided not to be part of that experiment. I didn't think I was strong enough but I knew I wanted to do something. Last year in school, we had a speaker come from Africa. He was living in Rwanda running an orphanage. When the genocide in Rwanda occurred, the US government told all US citizens to vacate Rwanda. He sent his family home, but made his personal decision to stay and help the orphans, as well as hide villages in his house. I was really moved that day. I decided that someday, I would like to make a difference, just like them. Little did I know that that day would come so soon. I spent a lot of time at the beginning of my diagnosis thinking about why cancer happened to me. I didn't do anything wrong to deserve it. Ultimately, the only answer that made any sense to me is that I needed to make a difference for kids like me who are sick. I knew I wanted to continue to further cancer research so that the next kids after me could have shorter treatments, more effective chemo drugs, fewer side effects, and an increase in success rates. 
I found out that the other half of testing experimental drugs is developing new drugs, and ultimately, new techniques for dealing with cancer. This takes money, money the hospital used to get through government grants, but those have gone away. <coughs> the hospital relies heavily on private donor funds, but what could I do? I had never raised money before, but I decided to go for it. Even if I fail, at least I tried. I told the Seattle Children's Foundation that I would like to start my own fundraising site to raise money for bone cancer research. They had just rolled out a new program of individual web pages where online donations could be made. I called my fund Cat's Crew to represent my friends and family, and as I would soon realize later, a group of people I had never met before. Seattle Children's Foundation was happy to help the small request of a teenage girl getting cancer. What they didn't expect is what happened over the last 11 months. I was 12 weeks into my treatment and was asked to give a speech on my eighth grade graduation in June. I was so nervous. I had no hair, no eyelashes, and no eyebrows. I put a scarf on my head and put on some makeup and stood in front of my entire class and my family. I talked about what I had learned during middle school and about what having cancer has taught me. I told my class that cancer doesn't define me and that I would be there. Afterwards, a teacher came up to me and told me that I have a voice and not all kids with illnesses are heard. I didn't understand what she meant at first, but after spending so much time at the hospital, I began to understand. I started to look around and notice all the kids receiving different treatments at Seattle Children's. There are kids who have difficulty walking or speaking, and kids with feeding tubes and huge scars. It was then that I found my strength. It was there all along. I just had to bring it out. One of my favorite quotes is, you don't know how strong you are, until being strong is your only option. These kids needed me to be their voice. It was too late to go back and start the experimental drug, so I focused that strength into raising money and awareness for Seattle Children's Hospital. I began writing articles and giving more speeches. I made it through my surgery in 18 more weeks of chemo afterwards. It was a hard journey with many tears. But after each milestone, I gained more strength to go on and do more. I am happy to report that CATS crew spans 10 countries and includes more than 500 people donated. With the incredible generosity of my friends, family, and people who are touched by my story, we have raised over $153,000 for my Surprise looks from the nurses. 
Cat, what are you doing here, they ask. I'm visiting, they say. Thank you so much, they say in return. It dawned on my mom and I one day. Maybe nobody comes back. It would definitely be the easiest thing to do. But sometimes, it's the littlest of things that mean the most to someone. It doesn't matter whether you raise the most money or donations. What matters is just putting out the effort. Small differences can make huge impacts. It's been my dream to attend Stanford one day and ride on their question team. When I got sick, my parents reached out to the coach down there and told her about me. They thought it would be good motivational factor for me to get connected and keep my dream in focus during chemo sessions. I was overwhelmed with the response. Each girl on the team sent me a letter with well wishes and pictures of their horses. One girl in particular sent me a bracelet she wore every day and during all of her treatments when she was diagnosed with leukemia at age 14. I was speechless. Here's this girl at Stanford who doesn't even know me, and she gives up something so special to her in hopes that it brings me the same strength. She doesn't know that her small effort <coughs> of giving me a bracelet has given me the strength to get through my treatments. It gives me the strength to speak and raise money for cancer research and the hospital. It gives me the strength to go back and visit other patients. A line from one of my favorite songs is every storm that's out of rain. I hope my storm is ending, but I will never forget. My passion has been handed to me. I didn't ask for it, it just happened. A year ago, I didn't know anything about kids with cancer. Today, I know too much. Maybe you already know your passion, or maybe you're still waiting for it to come. It will, and when it happens, act on it. Start out small, and each step along the way, you'll find your strength, and it will continue to grow. It's there inside each and every one of you. My hope today is that I passed on some of my strength to just one person who will make an impact, big or small. And whether it's with Seattle Children's, or another charity, or just helping out a friend in need, it doesn't matter. For me, knowing that one person has found the strength to make a difference makes me know that my struggle is worthwhile. Together, we can make a difference. On behalf of all of us kids at Seattle Children's, thank you so much for everything you have done.